In this video, you will learn how to graph polar equations, specifically Limassons and each of its types, which are the inner loop, cardioid, dimpled, and convex Limasson. And you'll be able to identify based on the ratio of A and B. You'd be able to identify which type of Limasson it is. But before discussing each of the types of limassons, let's start discussing about circles. Okay, the circle here has a formula or equation which is r equals a cosine theta or r equals a sine theta. Cosine theta, if it lies on the x-axis, and then sine theta, if it lies on the y axis. So if the equation is r equals a cosine theta, that means the graph or the circle would be facing either to the left or to the right depending on the value of a. This is our a here. If a is positive, a is greater than zero or positive, then the graph would face towards the right, or the circle faces towards the right. So a graph would look like this. All right. When the value of A is greater than zero or positive. All right, basically A here is the diameter of the circle. So the distance from this point here to here from the origin is just equal to a and the distance from the center to any point of the circle say from here to here is just half of a or let's say from here to here this is one half a how about if the value of a is negative say a is less than zero or negative All right, so when the value of A is negative, then the graph would face towards the left, or a circle faces towards the left. And again, um, this point here uh, from the origin is just equivalent to the diameter of the circle, which is A. And then, from the center of the circle to any point of the circle that is one half of a which is also equivalent to the um, radius of the circle how about if our equation is r equals sine theta all right, all right if it is sine theta then that means our graph or our circle lies on the y-axis. And if A is positive, then the graph faces upwards. If it is negative, then the graph or the circle faces downwards. So if A is greater than zero or positive, all right, the circle faces uh, towards or, or upwards. And again, uh, from this point here to this point is equivalent to A, which is just equal to the diameter of the circle. And then from the center of the circle to any point of the circle, that is one half of A, which is also the radius of the circle. How about if A is less than zero or negative? Then our circle faces downwards or a graph faces downwards, and again, from this point here to here is equivalent to A, which is the, um, also the diameter of the circle, and then from the center to any point of the circle is equivalent to one half A, or the radius of the circle. Now let's solve some sample problems here. 
how about if we're given these two equations here? R equals 2 cosine theta and R equals negative 5 cosine theta. Since it is cosine theta, so that means our graph would be facing either to the left or to the right. So let's graph the first equation first. R equals 2 cosine theta. Since the value of A here is equal to positive 2, then that means our graph or our circle would be facing towards the right. And one half of A, which is the radius of the circle, is just equal to one half of 2, which is equivalent to 1. Where A here, which is equal to 2, is just the diameter of the circle. All right, let's graph this. Okay, let's say this is 1, this is 2, 1, 2. Okay, this is our graph would look like. Um, this point to this point here is equivalent to A, which is equal to 2, the diameter of the circle, and from the center of the circle to here is just equal to 1, which is 1 half of A. Okay, how about R equals negative 5 cosine theta? Again, it's cosine theta, so that means our graph would be facing towards the left or right. And since the value of A here is equal to negative 5, then our circle would be facing towards the left. And then 1 half of A is just equal to negative 5. 1 half of negative 5, which is negative 2.5. So our A would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, to the left, and then our one half of a is two point five. Then our circle would look like this. Then we count two point five up or down. One, two. Oh, this is not accurate. <laughs> this is one, two, three. Okay. So this is 2.5 somewhere here. All right, the distance from this point to this one is just equal to 5. And that is towards the left, facing the left, because it is negative here. And then the distance from the center of the circle to any point on it is just equal to 2.5. Or from here to here, that's negative 2.5. Now let's discuss about the limassons and its types. All right, limassons. Okay, the limassons have equations R equals A plus minus B cosine theta if the graph lies on the x-axis cosine. And then R equals A plus minus B sine theta if the graph lies on the y-axis. Right. If it is positive, then it um, this equation here or the graph of this equation here would be facing towards the right, and if it is negative, it would be facing towards the left. And for sine theta, if it is positive, then it will face upwards, and if it's negative, then it would or minus it would face downwards. Now let's discuss the four types of 
limasons. So the first one is the inner um, inner looped limason. So this is when the ratio of A is to B is less than 1. Okay, say for example, R equals to plus 3 cosine theta. Since this is cosine, then that means our graph could be facing towards the left or the right. And this is positive, so that means our graph would be facing towards the right. Now let's um, get the ratio of A and B. Our A here is equal to 2, and B is equal to 3. This one. So the ratio of A is to, b to B is just 2 thirds, which is less than 1. Since it is less than 1, then that means um, the graph of this is an inner looped limousine. Now let's graph this. Let's plot the value of A first. So we count, since A is equal to 2, so we count uh, from the origin, 2 units from the origin, 1, 2. And then going down, 1, 2. Oh, this one. And for the inner loop, okay, the values of A here are our y-intercepts. And for the inner and outer loops, that would be our y-intercepts. So for our inner loop, would be that would be A minus B or B minus A. A minus B if A is greater than B and B minus A if B is greater than A. Since B here is equal to 3 and it is greater than 2, which is the value of our A, therefore our inner loop would be B minus A, which is 3 minus 2 and equals 1. So we count one unit to the right for our inner loop. Then let's graph this. All right. And then for our outer loop, the other intercept, that would be A plus B. So this is just 2 plus 3 equals 5. So we count from the origin 5 units from it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this point here. And then we can draw our graph. It will look like this. Oh, it's not perfect. It should look like Oh my. What happened? All right, our graph should look like that one. So this is an example of a graph for inner looped limason. If this is minus here, negative, then it will be facing to the left. And if this is sine theta, it will be facing upwards or downwards, depending whether it is positive or negative. Now let's talk about cardioid. Cardioid when the ratio of A to B is equal to 1. Let's say, for example, we have this equation, r equals 3 minus 3 cosine theta. All right. It is cosine theta, so that means our graph would be facing towards the left or to the right. And it is minus or negative here. So that means our graph would be facing to the left. So the value of our a is 3 as well as our b. Therefore, the ratio of 
a is to b is just equal to 3 over 3, which is equal to 1. So our graph would be a per diode. So let's graph this. All right, since the value of a here is equal to 3, then we count 3 units up and 3 units down. So 1, 2, 3. This is the point here. 1, 2, 3. On this point here. And for the other intercept, which is A plus B, because we don't have an inner loop, then we don't have to get B minus A, like the previous one. So we only need A plus B here. So A plus B is equal to 6. So we will be counting 6 units to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this point here. And then we just connect them. So our graph would look like this. Um, it would look like a heart. So basically the car diode is heart shaped. Alright, how about the other types of limason, which are the dimpulti and the convex. So those are the types of limasons that have no loops. So it could either be dimpled or convex. Say for example, say for example, we're given this equation, r equals 5 minus 2 sine theta. Okay, this is for limason without loop or no loop. Could be dimpled or convex. All right. Um, we're given here a sine theta, so that means our graph will be facing upwards or downwards. Since th this is negative or minus, then our graph would be facing downwards. So let's identify A here and B. So the value of A is equal to 5, and the value of B is equal to 2. Then let's get the ratio of A is to B. So that is 5 over 2 which is 2.5 and this is greater than 2. So that means this is a convex type of limason. Now let's graph this. Well, since the value of A is equal to 5, then we count 5 units to the left and to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And again, this has no loop, so we only need A plus B, which is 5 plus 2 equals 7. So we'll be counting 7 units downwards since it is sine theta negative. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this point here. And then we can connect the dots or the points. Then our graph would look like this. Oh, it's not perfect. Oh, sorry. Day. Okay, the graph of r equals 5 minus 2 sine theta looks like this. It would be perfect if you assign values uh, to your theta, then you will get a perfect graph. Because you can plot all of the points. Alright, that's all for now. I hope you now have ideas on how to identify limassons and how to graph them. I will be discussing how to graph rose curves and limnuscates in the next videos.